Uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation and thank you for the uh, invitation um, today. Um, the last year has obviously brought dramatic change uh, to the automotive sector amongst many other sectors, of course. Um, Deloitte has been, um, we've been very active in trying to understand the impact of these, these forces for change and what are the longer term implications it has not just from a manufacturing perspective, supply demand perspective, but also specifically in the context of this conversation, what, uh, what is, how has been the consumer reaction uh, to the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent <clears throat> um, economic shocks and shocks to GDP that have taken place over the course of the last year or so? Our firm has um, carried out, we do this annually, but, but arguably this year's survey was, has been the most uh, profound in terms of its findings. Uh, we've done, we do an annual automotive consumer, consumer survey, um, which, which looks at, I'll just buy, which looks at, uh, across 23 um, major economies, uh, of which of course we have a presence in and are also major automotive markets. And we surveyed <clears throat> over 20 odd thousand consumers or perhaps aspirant consumers of, of uh, passenger sedan vehicles um, over the course of the last few months. Uh, as part of the study, we, um, we surveyed over a thousand uh, consumers here in South Africa. And um, this morning I'd like to present to you over the course of the next 15, 20 minutes or so, just the key findings and hopefully provide some insight as to the mindset and the, uh, the pur purchasing uh, behaviors, intentions, ambitions uh, of the South African consumer as we understand her or, or him. So this is a summary document. Uh, the organizers of this conference will obviously send this, this to you <clears throat> after, after this conversation and feel free to, to, uh, to approach us if you require any more detailed data uh, into, this, uh, into this rather extensive survey study that has been undertaken. So firstly on vehicle financing trends, what is taking place in terms of vehicle financing? Of course, across the world, we live in a, in a almost, almost unprecedented time of relatively low interest rates. Of course, interest rates in South Africa remain high compared to typically Western economies, um, but are, are, are low compared to our, our historical, historical norms. And this is clearly providing quite a, uh, quite a strong tailwind uh, to, to the recovery of, um, of car sales uh, in, in the South African economy. But one of the questions we, we posed, we, we asked of our, of our, um, uh, of, of our consumers is <clears throat> what, what is your, ha, has your time horizon changed uh, in terms of how you're looking to, to when you'll be purchasing, uh, um, purchasing, or purchasing the next vehicle, but also how will you be purchasing uh, your next vehicle? And clearly financing South African consumers are of course in quite a, um, of cash-strapped position, particularly in the context of there's been no so-called helicopter money or largely support money coming through from the state in supporting small, medium enterprises in our economy. Very, very different compared to what we're seeing in the European context currently. So quite a, quite a sizable percentage of majority even of, um, of, of, of respondents to our survey found that over five hours of research is done on the, uh, the options of financing options of purchasing a vehicle. This is quite extensive and talks to, the, to very much of the price sensitive nature of the South African consumer in the current circumstance. We looked at the top three factors that are, that are important uh, for receiving the lowest finance rate, of course, uh, convenience and easy access payment process. Uh, the, the, the lowest possible, possible interest rate, of course, is a primary determinant, but I think also there's, there's seemingly a, um, a often a, a lack of transparency, one can argue, which came through in the data uh, that many respondents uh, spoke about in terms of how they understand how financing um, is uh, and interest rates provided are, are, are in fact calculated when purchasing a vehicle. We're seeing younger consumers, quite obviously, younger consumers who, who um, seek to um, speak towards, speak with a li live representative uh, compared to, to, and more important for older consumers. This is almost counterintuitive. We're seeing an increased trend towards digital sales, 
we've seen companies like Mercedes-Benz, BMW, particularly in the last year, year and a half or so, which have really led with this, this, uh, this new sales model of digital sales, um, specking vehicles online, collecting from a dealership perhaps, but we're still seeing that's predominantly a new generation, younger generation sort of trend, where older consumers, maybe I'm somewhere in the middle, pre prepare or prefer rather uh, some sort of personal interaction with the uh, with the sales uh, salesperson or the dealership. Two thirds of consumers are somewhat or very likely to purchase credit protection as part of a new loan lease agreement. This particularly talks to the uh, one could exaggerating the precarious nature of employment during times, the economically challenging times uh, that, we, that we're currently living in. And the responses are quite overwhelming in, in this regard. So younger consumers are willing to wait longer to receive a decision about a vehicle uh, sort of financing application, somewhat surprisingly. Um, this is, we, we segmented this research, of course, in terms of age categories. Um, I'm squarely in the middle one. But we're seeing this, um, this, uh, this, this um, surprising patience almost amongst younger consumers to wait for that, that, um, that approval uh, to come through. Again, I mentioned earlier, lack of transparency, a key factor. And of course, I think legislation is, is moving toward this, we've seen this particularly in the UK market in recent times, where uh, far greater transparency of calculation of, of interest rate and how finance is provided for new vehicles are actually calculated um, and from a financing company to dealership amongst others in the process. But this is this lack of transparency in the process can, came through rather strongly and is something which, which clearly um, needs, to, needs to be addressed. One quarter of consumers, uh, and again, this is the, the times we live in, uh, a vehicle payment deferment over the course of the last year, the, the damage to GDP, uh, the, uh, the, the threat of job security and rising unemployment in our country certainly has resulted in this. And it just talks to a young aspirational middle class, a young aspirational middle class that is particular, a young aspirational urban middle class particularly, but one that is, that is under increasing uh, financial pressure. And this, this certainly reflects that. So future vehicle intentions, what is the South African consumer, the average, if I can say that, average South African consumer thinking around purchasing a vehicle currently? So we've seen half of consumers, a substantial uh, chunk, have altered their timeline for acquiring the next vehicle uh, or, or perhaps delaying their purchase uh, when in light of the search for greater certainty, financial certainty going forward. Uh, this talks of job security and, you know, uh, sort of available, the available um, spend uh, that they may have um, in their pocket with time. So I'm not going to read through this data for you, uh, to you in specific detail, but the, the take home here really is, is that uh, I think new car sales particularly, uh, we're seeing a boom, of course, in pre-owned car and pre-owned sales. The new car sales, particularly, will see a, a, um, a kind of, of, of a of a muted recovery, also contributed by this uh, by this factor as well. So only 16% of consumers are thinking about a different kind of vehicle as a result of the pandemic, and half these want to spend less money uh, in in the process as well. Will virtual sales, virtual vehicle sales going forward? Um, yes, but a significant number of people still want to acquire their next vehicle in person at the dealership. And again, in, in car obsessed South Africa, the, the touch and feel and test drive of a vehicle is, is, um, is arguably perhaps more, um, more established as a, as, a, as a practice and other emerging economies, particularly think Asia. I see what's taking place in China and other sort of Southeast Asian, Asian countries, where the move to digital arguably has been somewhat faster, where there's a lot more, um, how can I say, legacy of how a vehicle is purchased, particularly amongst mid to old generation um, consumers in our, own, in our own country. So uh, even if people are looking for virtual sales experience, most of them would still prefer to acquire the next vehicle uh, from a dealership. And of course, we're seeing maybe this will change over time as a number of dealers, dealerships, uh, OEM dealerships, OEM branded dealerships start to decline in number 
And I think there's going to be a, a, a quite a consolidation uh, around this, around driven by economic hard times, undoubtedly. Uh, at the same time, shrinking segments, certainly shrinking in certain areas, um, particularly amongst premium luxury, and a consolidation towards bigger dealerships and peripheral dealerships, arguably, will be will be increasingly marginalised. Uh, but this is something which um, which, which also comes through uh, in, um, in in the data that that we that we have from the survey. So, end of the day, uh, some things are simply hard to digitize, of course, but uh, certain people do need to see and drive a vehicle before they buy it. And that's a resounding 80% said this. And this is very contrary to the expectation that we are moving towards digital, but perhaps people are, are reticent to, to, to commit to buying online or purely digital sales, having not experienced it before. So I think the resounding is 80%, but I don't think that's an argument for the status quo. I think things will change undoubtedly and the future of automotive retail must move along with it. Um, but at the same time, taking, taking um, well, having full cognizance of the, as I mentioned, the, the legacy and the, uh, the, the passion almost of, of how many people purchase cars uh, in, uh, in our country. And um, some things never change as consumers still want a good deal with transparent pricing. This, 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 this concept, this notion of of transparency it came through a great deal in research um, of how, particularly around the financing and what consumers are getting uh, for their, their, their hard earned money to be spent. 17% of consumers are either somewhat or very likely to buy their next vehicle without a test drive. And that talks to the 80% earlier I mentioned, seeking to have some sort of physical interaction. So this is, this is quite low, particularly for a, I would argue, developing emerging country like South Africa, where there's a lot of new entrants into the vehicle market, people who have never owned a vehicle before. And you would think there would be a, um, a higher number who would be more willing to, to um, embrace a digital sales experience rather than to, um, to, to, to um, purchase a vehicle, dare I say, in a more traditional route. But of course, with inflection point, times are changing, and perhaps they just haven't experienced the technology, or arguably the technology is not up to scratch as to what people meet in the expectation of the, of the consumer and how vehicles are actually sold. Uh, I think that is, the, that is the, uh, the, the key challenge we face here, as revealed by the data. So virtual servicing, consumers, many consumers are interested, but opinions do, do certainly vary. Uh, it's very clear from the, this, this data you can see in this slide is that people don't want to pay for convenience. Um, would they, I think this, is, this also has implications for uh, the sort of right to repair pending legislation going forward is, is the convenience factor. How do, do um, traditional services of OEMs, dealership groups, service vehicles in a more convenient consumer friendly fashion uh, to become more competitive and provide a more um, value add servicing option uh, going, going forward. And young consumers, of course, are more interested in subscription services. And this is the sort of so-called future of, um, of, of mobility here, where we're seeing the, uh, it's not just about purchasing the vehicle, but it's about uh, the additional service offerings that are available, particularly uh, in vehicles as well. But on the subscription side, it's saying, well, not just buying a single vehicle, but how do I subscribe to, to a wider range of vehicles under the same brand perhaps, and pay a fee around usability rather than ownership. And this is something which is very new in our context, um, yet to take off, but it, it just talks to the, to the initial, um, initial feedback we're seeing from, uh, from the survey. And finally, uh, the consumer trust is split between the brand of vehicle they own and either the selling or servicing of that vehicle. And uh, this particularly is, it, it talks to the right to repair legislation, the impact the legislation will have on the local marketplace um, going, going forward. And it comes down to trust. Uh, I think this is the, the, the key um, intangible um, of consumer loyalty is how do how do brands, how do the OEMs, um, how does a vehicle, um, the, the brand and the dealership in sort of sense of trust. And that talks to how 
um, how one's data is managed, the CRM process, the outreach to consumers, which would certain brands do very well and other brands arguably do not. But I think this notion of trust, particularly in a vehicle uh, that, um, um, you know, uh, you see certain brands which have built OEMs that have built their entire um, entire business on the concept of safety and trust. Uh, I think how that plays out now going forward between not just the OEMs, but the dealers and the consumer to build trust in terms of servicing, warranties, et cetera, is something really which, which, will, which will dictate the future of, of auto retail um, in, in, in all economies, markets. So technology in focus earlier, I mentioned sort of um, the key issues of mobility, um, as a service, perhaps beyond just the hardware, what is the software that comes with with the vehicle? The interest in internal combustion engines is is, is certainly there, um, but but of course, South Africa is unique in arguably a negative way in terms of lagging the uh, the overall global trend towards shift towards um, towards battery electric vehicles or new energy vehicles uh, going going forward. So to buy an electric vehicle, just again, I'll go into detail shortly, but it's about lower fuel costs, emissions, less maintenance. And what are the key drivers of, of purchasing an electric vehicle? Particularly, we know it's regulation driven by state regulation. Um, secondly, it's about incentives, um, both, of, well, both of which do not exist in, in, in South Africa's case. Incentives in terms of subsidies, tax incentives, less tax on the vehicle, particularly being an imported vehicle. Um, and also arguably, uh, or certainly, a charging infrastructure uh, to counter so-called range anxiety, particularly prevalent in a very large, large, uh, a large country like our own, rather than a small, a small one, a uh, long distance range anxiety. And lastly, um, arguably, environmental consciousness. Do South African automotive users or consumers have an automotive, uh, have a, a, an environmental consciousness to the same degree as many Western economies were elsewhere? Just a provocative question. And again, what we've seen in the last couple of years is increased issues or concerns around infrastructure, charging infrastructure and the like, but particularly in light of the, uh, in South Africa's case, the unreliability of, of, the, um, of, uh, of, of, of grid supply to charge one's vehicle. A key point in the SA's case is affordability. Uh, the number, the, the, the price point, the entry price point of, of an electric vehicle, battery electric vehicle in South Africa is almost double that of the average car price, which I believe is currently about 358,000 Rand, thereabouts for a new car price average, where the EV entry price is double that. And this affordability, so EVs clearly are not vehicles for the mass market, which they need to be. And I think this talks to a middle class under pressure as well. Um, so even with incentives, even with infrastructure, even with, with, with tax breaks on vehicles, there'll certainly still remain a quite a sizable gap between what the mass market can afford and what EVs actually cost, unless the, 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 the solution to that would be um, later on new models coming through from OEMs, which are much cheaper than early sort of uh, early market entry vehicles, which are EVs, which are clearly um, priced accordingly um, as new tech uh, most often is. So um, uh, I'll fly through this just in the interest of time. So in, in the interest of connectivity or autonomous uh, subscription or sharing electrification case technologies, only four in 10 consumers believe, believe autonomous vehicles will not be safe. And 70% are concerned about connected vehicle security. And of course, there's some unique dynamics in South Africa's case here to, to, to think about as well. And the very last slide is, Safety technologies are top of mind as blind spot warnings and emergency braking are among the most desired vehicle features. And these numbers will, will readily be consistent across most markets, but it talks to the issue of safety um, and what consumers are, are expecting or perhaps willing to pay for as, as options, cost options in the new vehicles that they purchase. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Um, as mentioned, uh, this survey is available, the global survey is available on our website. Uh, this is the, the data from the South African survey we did and will be shared with all of you uh, by, the, by the organizers of this conference uh, hereafter. Thank you very much for your time for listening. Uh, always good to engage and, um, and drive safely. Thank you very much. <laughs>